Hi there, thank you for joining me again. If you're following my proposed solution for San Francisco, you might enjoy this video. I've gone ahead and created a Cliff Notes version to support my original proposed solution. I got, I've received some feedback where people found it a bit much. Um, it was a lot of information, but it can be easily summarized in this particular uh, PowerPoint that I've created. As you see here, this is the location of Fort Mason. Uh, to illustrate uh, the use of my, uh, or my use of the psychic cards uh, to show where the locations are for the clues. Um, they were intended, the psychic cards were intended to avoid a directional um, sequential order to the clues. And actually you can just shuffle them like you would any deck of cards and it would be randomized but you would still have the same information in your hands so with that i decided to do this backwards and start um to the place the cask is kept uh we move on to the giant pole giant step which is the star symbol of the psychic cards uh, where the old flagpole used to stand on the old main street there in fort mason uh that used to be the flagpole was surrounded by a large mound. Then we have the uh, signpost for the intersection of Funston and Franklin that is dedicated to Frederick Funston, who was the object of Twain's attention and ridicule, uh, more precisely. Uh, although he did, in fact, save the city of San Francisco during the earthquake of 1906. Uh, closer to the cliffs to the shore there, we have John C. Fremont and Je Jesse B. Fremont. And as I mentioned in my original solution, I believe that this puzzle uh, for San Francisco is a love letter to Jesse Fremont. I've seen some conversations taking place online regarding the fact that uh, the artist John J. Palancar, J. J. Palancar, uh, has alluded to a clue uh, being the Fremont uh, clue, or as other, as most people believe it to be the Fairmont clue. I would certainly love to have a conversation with the artist to confirm that in fact he meant Fremont, not Fairmont. Next, we have the Haskell House, where the three high posts are located, the Major Haskell, uh, Senator Broderick, and Justice Terry. And as I was creating this, I realized a possible additional clue that the repetition of giant in the verse might be the repetition of the names David on the wood post that stands directly in front of where the cask is kept in front of where the old giant pole used to be. Irvin McDowell is in fact the uh, general that was is, is most famous for having been defeated by Stonewall Jackson. Therefore, the air smells sweet of defeat is my play on words, I'm assuming is what Byron intended. So as you can see, uh, the verse is actually starts from Irvin and ends at the giant pole, giant step. Uh, so you can play these in any which way and get the same result. Moving on. So to support the fact that there was a methodology used by Byron Price in order to create these very complicated puzzles, uh, I imagined he had some sort of common denominators that he used for all of the puzzles. My particular take on it, as I, others as well believe, is that he used a visitor's guide or visitor's map for the parks that he chose to bury the casks in. This is a, a uh, photocopy a PDF scanned copy of a photocopy of a 1971 uh, handout brochure that you would have received visiting Fort Mason. And in reviewing this at the park archives over my, one of my many visits, I noticed that all of the characters in my theory uh, uh, that I believe are part of the puzzle are actually mentioned in this 1971 uh, visitors brochure. Uh, we have Irvin McDowell, Leonidas Haskell, John C. Fremont. Then we have Jesse B. Fremont, 
David Broderick, the senator that was shot to death in a duel by Justice Terry. And lastly, we have Fred Funston, who I've already mentioned was the object of Mark Twain's attention. As Funston was a bit of a good guy, bad guy. Uh, I guess he was a hero to some because he saved uh, San Francisco during the earthquake of 1906. He was also a pretty uh, terrible person when it came to segregating the uh, Chinese uh, people during the uh, camps that were set up to take care of all the people that became homeless when their homes fell to the ground, burned, whatnot, uh, because of the earthquake. Um, That said, he was also a bit of a warmonger, um, so he, it was, he was a multiple personality guy, I suppose. Uh, well, as you can see now, all of my characters fit into my solution, and one thing I forgot to add in, at the beginning is that from the Fremont house, which is, I believe, the primary clue in the puzzle, you can see uh, uh, all of the clues that are in image one that are part of the puzzle. Uh, actually, from all of Fort Mason, uh, from, from various locations within Fort Mason, you can see the Golden Gate Bridge, you can see Angel Island, Alcatraz, the uh, Aquatic Park with the, uh, I believe it's the Beach Hide uh, cable car uh, stop, as well as Ghirardelli Square. Uh, so it is the ideal location and I believe that's where the treasure is. And so with that, I'll be working on part three of my series here. Uh, which is to create an actual walkthrough video of Fort Mason to showcase all of the locations in person. So stay tuned for that if you're still interested.